it's kind of like WandaVision saw the season finale of The Mandalorian and said, Jasper, hold my beer. What's going on, YouTube? This was Off of Love with Hearthstone Media. Thanks for tuning in again, but if this is your first time checking out the channel, you're late. Without further ado, let's get to the video because WandaVision Episode 5 was bananas. Like, all the bananas. It's kind of like WandaVision saw the season finale of The Mandalorian and said, Jasper, hold my beer. Because in this episode, the veil started to come down. We finally got a real solid glimpse of what Marvel is doing with this show. And Marvel was being, well, Marvel. And in this episode, they were being Marvel at their best. And what Marvel does and what Marvel does well was put on full display in this episode. So without further ado, let's get into episode five. This is going to be a spoiler review because I don't have it in me to do this review of this episode non-spoiler. Way too much happened and was going on in this video. Actually, I leapfrogged my review of episode three and four because this episode was... This episode was groundbreaking and I had to talk about this now. Like immediately after I watched the video, I wanted to get up and just started filming this, but unfortunately I couldn't. So let's get on to what happened in this episode. For one, the first thing that is noticed, Marvel is officially out of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And now they have flash forwarded into, seems to be the late 80s or yeah, I guess you could say early 90s because they have an opening that models growing pains Family Ties, and Full House. Now, of course, when you're watching these shows, kind of like all of the little signals is registering in your mind, like, wait a minute, that reminds me of something that looks like something. Is that Full House? Is that Growing Pains? Is that The Wonder Years? What is that? So had to do a little research to find out exactly it is exactly modeled after Growing Pains, Family Ties, and Full House. I didn't figure all of those out, like off just the visual of it, but I did grow up watching those shows, so they were familiar to me. So let's talk about the cast of the show. How brilliant it is bringing in new characters like a comedic actress like Katherine Hahn to play Agnes, who we believe has some type of sinister role or will have a sinister role in this show. But you, you implement a comedic actress in that role, hence Marvel doing something and getting something right. Then casting Tiana Paris as Monica Rambeau, and I think she plays an excellent Monica Rambeau, and I look forward to seeing her more going forward in the MCU. I think these are great additions to the MCU going forward. Like I said, Katherine Hahn and Tiana Paris. Then they chose the perfect characters. It's like, you know, just when you didn't know you wanted something or didn't know you missed something, Marvel gives it to you by bringing Randall Park's character Jimmy Woo from San Francisco into this world, bringing him to New Jersey, and even in his first scene, he's introducing himself to Monica Rambeau using close-up magic. James E. Woo. That he envied Scott Lang in, in Ant-Man, that he practiced, and he gives her his card using his close-up magic. That is... Marvel at its best. That is continuity at its finest. And then to bring Kat Danning, who we all loved as Darcy, to bring her for that other comedic role. So now you have a very, 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 think about what Marvel does right. Bringing Kat Denning in for comedy. Bringing in Randall Park for more comedy. Bringing in Katherine Hahn for more comedy in a show that is going to get very dark. It is getting very dark right now as we look at what's transpiring in the show. We now know that not only has Wanda Maximoff taken over this town, everybody is being painfully brainwashed in this town. When Vision unlocks his coworker and he says he's in pain, you realize he's being separated from his wife and family. This show takes a completely different turn from the jovial, comedic, feel and feel good family vibes we were getting in episode one and two. Are you crying? But I'm invested. When we were in doubt on whether Wanda was a victim in this, whether somebody was manipulating her to now find out she's orchestrating and manipulating the whole thing, this show just took a, a big turn in a dark, dark direction. But yet you still have that element of comedy in there with Darcy, with Agent Wu. And even though uh, Catherine Hahn's character Agnes hasn't really delved into anything comedic because usually when she's in the show it's very cheesy and hammy but just knowing she's there and she has that comedic you know oomph about her you know that's gonna supply something to the makeup of this show 
So the cast is solid now. So now we look at where did this episode go? Where did this episode take us? We had so many discoveries. Wanda coming out of the bubble after the drone is sent in to confront Sword. All of the guns, you know, bearing down on her. All of these beams, yet she is unafraid unscathed and dare I say it she has finally reached her OP as she was in the comics Wanda is extremely overpowered it is even joked upon I mean so many things are kind of put in your face tongue-in-cheek about what's happening on screen the things that we want to know the things that we question they actually question them in the show when Jimmy Woo is talking to the director and he says jokingly, wait a minute, she doesn't have any type of crazy weird name or costume or anything. It's like, this is so funny. I almost thought they were gonna call her Scarlet Witch and he kind of looked and was like, no, uh, no, she doesn't. That was hilarious because you're waiting for these things to happen and then they kind of don't, they tease you with them. Darcy saying we have a friend that I think can help us with this and he's an aerospace engineer. It just leads you to think like, who are they calling next? Who is going to be the hidden cast member? Who is next to enter this cast? Will we actually get an Avenger in this cast? Because this threat is really ramping up and it's making me wonder, where is Doctor Strange out? Now mind you, this takes place, we, we finally get an, an inkling from episode four of exactly the timeline of this show. This show takes place about roughly two and a half to three weeks after Endgame. So a lot has transpired. The blip has happened. People have come back to life. And now Scarlet Witch has then stolen Vision's body out of wherever it was. People are still dealing with the death of Tony Stark. People are still dealing with coming back to life. His threats is a lot going on in the MCU right now. So I get it why this is not a huge major deal. You know, Captain America's old, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're off doing whatever, Black Widow's dead. So I guess it makes sense that Scarlet Witch would be allowed to go rogue because the people that kind of held her in check or were there for her, they're all gone. This is dead, Cap's gone. You know, Black Widow's gone. Doctor Strange is doing whatever. But her powers have gone exponentially. She's, she's doing so many things now that she wasn't doing, you know, in, a, in the past couple of Marvel movies. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Her, her level of telepathy, her level of mind control, all of these things she's doing, which again was talked about in the show. They actually mentioned it like, wait a minute. She's super powerful. Can she even do this? And then that's answered by Monica Rambeau saying, well, she did kind of almost defeat Thanos. Like she would have beaten Thanos had he not called for rain fire. It was either she mentioned that or Darcy mentioned it, whatever. It was one of them things where I was like, well, I didn't even know the details of the battle like that. But I just went with it. But it was asked and answered. So many things in this show have been asked and answered. It makes you wonder. You know, how could she do this? How is this happening? How is this happening? And they just literally just answer the question. So now Wanda confronts Storm and she basically just says, get the F off my lawn or there will be consequences. And she basically shows her hand. She shows them what could be done if, you know, if they don't listen to her word. Now you got vision, vision, the veil is, is being pulled down. The veil is being lifted. Vision is figuring things out. He unlocks one of his coworkers and he starts spilling the beans. Vision knows that this isn't right and you think it's gonna come down to them actually battling it out in the midst of their sitcom. It was crazy. The children went from babies and to now little six-year-olds or seven-year-olds and you see the children actually aware of their ability to age up and they actually do it not once but twice in the show and this you know the you know Agnes is there when the children age up she's witnessing it but she is mind controlled and that's what Vision kind of starts to realize wait a minute you're doing stuff right in front of Agnes is that not right? Is that safe? Is that whatever? But Wanda knows she's mind control. It doesn't matter really what I do in front of her. But also it shows that Wanda is kind of losing her grip. She's losing her ability to control all of these things. Even when she says it in the scene, do you think I could really do this? You think I could really control somebody getting the mail, going to work every day, going to do this? And you're like, wow, she's actually doing that. She is Professor X level 
mind control right now. How is she doing that? How has she gotten so OP'd? Now, the thing that's great about Marvel is, you know, Marvel will leave none of those questions unanswered. Marvel doesn't do anything that doesn't make sense. Marvel doesn't do anything that's not going to come to matter or mean something. Yes, over the years, they've had a couple of continuity slip ups. Yes, so over the years, they've had a couple of questionable things that, you know, they had to shoehorn in or were kind of thrown in to try to like leeway to another movie. They you know, start filming some movies that weren't finished being written. They've done a couple of things like that, but they've always figured it out and they've always righted the ship and they do an excellent job at it. And I think with this show, they're showing, they're just doing whatever the hell they want to do right at this point. And it's working. That's the crazy part. This show is showing that Marvel could basically do anything and it actually works. It doesn't just work because we're fans. It works because it actually works. Now let's get to you know you got vision being awoke you got the kids aging up at will you got scarlet witch becoming unraveled you got you know some dissension in sword we don't really know what uh, what's going on with the director and the hexacons and the hexacons on his rug and the hexacons on the picture on his wall the somewhat tension building between him and Monica Rambo, who Monica would have, for all intents and purposes, had his job when her mom passed or when she was no longer able to be the director of SWORD, had she not been snapped away. So now she's back and does she pose a potential threat to him? Is that why he sent her to the bubble to begin with? Was he hoping that she would disappear? Or was he really putting his best foot forward, putting his best agent on it? He sent her there as if he had barely any information. Well, I guess at the time they really didn't have a whole lot of information, but it kind of seems like he sent her on a wild goose chase and then come to find out it was a lot of goose or geese. Yeah, a lot of geese. So what is really going on there is so many things that's left to be you know, left to come to light. And then when Vision confronts Wanda and they have that standoff where you really think it's about to be some domestic violence going on there and that would be some domestic violence. It gets, I mean, it gets dark. It gets real. It gets per personal. It hits home. It gets serious. Very very serious, very, very fast. And then you have, which may be the biggest mind warp of anything in the MCU. They recast Pietro. And I didn't know, when, when she was talking about you can't cheat death and bringing people back, I thought it was alluding to Vision. But I thought in the back of my mind, the fact that in that episode, they had mentioned her brother and she mentioned a couple of times that she had a brother. And it was a little bit, it was a lot of brotherly talk going on there. But I never guessed what happened in that final scene. And then for Darcy to say it on camera, they recast Pietro. It was like so mind blowing because not only did they do it, but they mentioned it in the show because they're watching get on one division which i only up until last episode put the two and two together that one division which i at first thought was a stupid ass name for a show because i'm thinking wanda and vision that make one division never sounded right to me and now i get it it's one division not television i that just dawned on me i swear if you're one of the other people that just dawned on be honest about it. Say it. It just dawned on me after the second episode. Uh, maybe middle or third episode. I was like, holy crap. WandaVision. But don't judge me. Because throughout the course of waiting for the show to debut, I had never heard anybody make that connection. So I could be late. I could be the only one. I, I don't know. But we're watching WandaVision. And they just recast one of the main characters. And then they mentioned it on screen but even then what are the ramifications of evan peters quicksilver which 80 percent of fans out there say is the best version of quicksilver presently in 
Marvel, not the MCU. And even though the new X-Men movies weren't that well received, especially how they ended with Dark Phoenix, most everybody can agree that the casting of the movies was really, 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 really solid. I mean, Michael Fassbender as Magneto is just as good to me as Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. James McAvoy, the way he portrays Professor X, I mean, was excellent in every single movie. If we could get some of those, let, let, let me not even talk about, let me not even talk about that. Let's just think of the ramifications of bringing Evan Peters' Quicksilver into the MCU. What is that? What does that do? What does that do for the MCU? What? I, listen, I don't know what they're doing, but I love it. This show, in the last two episodes, is propelling the already grand, great, amazing MCU to a, a new level. We have no idea what else is going to be delivered to us right now. We have no idea what they're going to do with the Loki show. Falcon and Winter Soldier could be anything right now. They are pulling out all the stops. And anything that DC thought they were about to do, they're just going to be doing. They're not going to be doing in competition with the MCU as it stands right now. The Snyder Cut is not gonna be your savior. If you're a DC fan and you're watching this, I'm sorry. The Snyder Cut is not gonna right all wrongs. I literally think they're filming a whole new movie just to match the hype that the Snyder Cut is, is building. But this show, when it wraps, if they continue to go in the direction they're going, is probably going to be better than anything that the DCEU has rolled out second to the first three quarters of the first Wonder Woman. Because everybody knows that final act was trash. Other than that, I don't think there's anything in the DCEU that can compare. If I was ranking this show, as it stands right now, if, if Evan Peters walking in as recast Quicksilver was the last episode I still rank this show with just the five episodes in the top half of all MCU properties that's how good it's been just in the past three episodes because the first two episodes were just the first two episodes were the opening credit to a movie and now we got the meat the potatoes and Episode 5 could have been a season finale for me. That's how good it was. So, guys, if you're not, if you're watching this, you're watching WandaVision. I'm pretty sure. If you're watching this, you've already seen it. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate y'all. I'm going to be bringing you more MCU content and more content like this, especially if you hit the like and subscribe button because that really helps the channel out. And I need the help. I need all the help I can get. Please help me be better. And leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the show and I'm mind-blowingly out. One. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And as always, if you like these videos, you can click my face here to subscribe or here to watch more videos. One.